It is that time of year again when we bring out the pumpkins and the goblins and ghouls prepare for their moment. I'm not even talking about Halloween. I'm talking about election time. And this year, it's the midterms. So our emphasis is on politics this week. And for that, we turn to our dynamic duo of political punditry, the men behind the people running things and running for things. Chris Russell is a Republican strategist and co-founder of Checkmate Strategies, and Leroy Jones is the chairman of the New Jersey State Democratic Committee. They are collectively known as Russell and Jones, and it's a pleasure to welcome them back to chat box. Gents, good to see you both again. You too. Thanks, Ace. Good to see you. Good to see you always, Chris. It's been a while, you, man. You too, I know. It keeps on. <laughs> All right, so it's about to get super hot on the airwaves and in our mailboxes as we move closer to Election Day proper. Uh, let me get each of you to hip us to what you think the landscape looks like for your party in New Jersey uh, less than a month out. We flipped a coin and we decided to go by alphabetical order. So, Chris Russell, let's start with you. <laughs> what's, <laughs> sure, going no. on, what's going on now and what are we going to see when the returns start to come in on, on November 8th? Listen, la last year there was a lot of momentum for Republicans across the state uh, picking up legislative seats and local seats and running close in the governor's race. And I think you're seeing a continuation of that. Uh, Democrats in the in the uh, off season here did a, a, a good job uh, gerrymandering the congressional map to their favor. But I think Republicans are uh, on the move in a bunch of these seats in three, five, 11. I think Tom Kane is a favorite in seven. So I, I think the, the playing field might be a little larger than Leroy thought it was back in January. Chairman? Now you know, now you know I have a different of difference of yeah. opinion. Uh, you know, he is, uh, you know, he is like somewhere in paradise. We talked about the tan. So, you know, Chris, you need to take a <laughs> vacation because all that stuff does not compute at all. Uh, you know, Democrats, uh, you know, hold the 10-2 majority here in, in the state. Uh, you know, that will continue. I do have to say that, uh, you know, the CD7, uh, you know, that is a battleground. Uh, you know, one that, uh, you know, I believe will surprise a lot of people, uh, you know, come, uh, you know, when all the votes are counted uh, after Election Day. I, I can tell you, David, three, I, I'm, I work in three for Bob Healy. That is going to be a close race. Uh, we feel good about the progress. And like I said, I think there's a couple other sleepers out there. It's uh, things that started moving Republicans way nationally, and that that kind of wave nationally helps Republicans here in New Jersey. I see. Uh, I, want, I, I want to get agree to... with that. I think that there's a change nationally. We've seen, uh, you know, th there's a tightening of the, you know, the national polls when you're talking about, uh, you know, generic Republicans and Dems. But uh, you know, New Jersey, uh, you know, is an outlier, and uh, you know, you, you know, you will see that, uh, you know, play its way out, uh, you know, come, you know, through as we go through this election process. And you know, we, you know, we're in an election cycle right now, right? So people are voting right now. Uh, you know, we've ID'd, uh, you know, tre tremendous number of voters in CD11 and CD7, uh, you know, as well as some of, you know, the other uh, battleground districts. And, uh, you know, they trend them. Uh, you know, vote by mail has been, uh, you know, coming in, you know, pretty heavily. And uh, they tr they tend, tr they trend them. So, right. uh, you know, I expect that as we, you know, move forward with this, 10-2 will uh, prevail, uh, you know, come election day. I want to get to some more of those predictions in a bit, but... Let me stick with you here, uh, Chairman. Uh, we've seen polling that says voters are worried about what's happening in their pockets, less so than some other issues like abortion. Uh, I know you're not handling any of the congressional campaigns directly, but why are Democrats so focused on an issue that many here say is in New Jersey say is down on their list of concerns? No, I, I think those uh, polling trends that you talk about, Dave, are uh, more national than anything. I've seen the national polls the other day, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, yes, the economy plays uh, and looms large. That doesn't mean that, uh, you know, Democrats here don't, uh, you know, don't understand and, uh, you know, and respect, uh, you know, that uh, that that uh, phenomenon. Uh, you know, but, uh, you know, uh, when we're, you know, when we're talking to, uh, you know, women, particularly women, uh, you know, young women, uh, you know, they, uh, you know, they feel very strongly about, uh, you know, the violation of uh, abortion rights that the Supreme Court, uh, you know, seemed to have trampled on. And, uh, you know, so that becomes a rights campaign. You know, a lot of people will try to blame, uh, you know, the uh, the president, uh, you know, even on a pandemic for that matter, uh, you know, which, uh, you know, is a contributor to, uh, you know, what we see in the, uh, you know, the economy and inflation, uh, you know, the Ukraine plays, uh, you know, plays quite heavily with uh, respect to that. So, uh, you know, yeah, we, you know, we're focused on the economy as well, but when you talk about rights, uh, you know, whether they be civil rights, 
uh, you know, reproductive freedoms. You know, those things loom large uh, in this particular election in New Jersey. Meanwhile, Chris, candidates in your party have kind of been walking the tightrope on the abortion issue. They say they're pro-choice, but then they go on to list the restrictions uh, that take choice away from pregnant people. Can you be both pro-choice and then restrict that choice? I actually think that's the mainstream position in the country and in the, and in the state, that people believe that there should be a right to an abortion in most cases, but they believe in restrictions, things like parental notification for a minor, uh, no, no late-term abortions. They want doctors, not non-doctors. I think these are mainstream positions. So I think that's something that Republicans need to articulate and I think have. I think back to what Leroy said about the economy, um, listen, in New Jersey, we have, we have one of the highest tax states in the country. So when inflation hits, it hits harder here. It hits harder in New Jersey. People are paying over $700, $700 more a month, according to uh, the analysis I saw, uh, more than they were a year ago in terms of their household uh, expenses. And when you live in between, uh, as we all know and, and fight with as campaign operatives, we know how dominant New York and Philadelphia are as markets uh, in this state. We're kind of uh, sandwiched between them. They see what's happening in New York City with the crime issue. They see what's happening in Philadelphia with the crime issue. That make no mistake, that impacts races in Bergen County and Gloucester County and Burlington County. And, and I think Democrats, you know, you know, here in New Jersey have to pay attention to that, that people see crime as an issue and they're concerned about it. And when you talk about crime, uh, you know, you, you can't you know, help but to talk about guns. And Democrats have been, you know, strong, uh, you know, on, uh, you know, on guns. And, um, you know, and making sure that, uh, you know, guns are out of the hands of, uh, you know, people that, uh, you know, have no need for them because uh, of the harm that it does, that it does, uh, you know, but, the, you know, when we talk about reproductive freedoms, let's, you know, let's, let's look at this picture that, you know, we, you know, we three men, three men discussing, you know, what, uh, you know, a, a woman's right is. Uh, you know, a woman's choices, how a woman is going to, uh, you know, deal with health issues that impact her body. Uh, you know, that is the, you know, that is the irony in this whole thing that many of, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, the, the issue that, uh, you know, stems around abortion are being discussed and decided by men. And that's dead wrong. But think about that. But Leroy, I think the one thing you, you would even admit, things like parental notification for minors, late term abortions, non-doctors performing abortions. These are not mainstream positions. They're they're for their extreme positions and Democrats in, in, that's the, in, the, in the state. That's the but, but, that's, side, but that's where that's where your party's been voting because that you got you're, you're trying to placate your far left base. And right now, that's not where this issue is. There's there's a middle ground in abortion that I think the, the rational, reasonable people in the middle want want both sides to find. We just believe in choice. Uh, and, a, and a woman's right to choose, you know, how she deals with, uh, you know, her health concerns and her health issues that, that impact her body. And a 15 year old girl probably wants her uh, parents probably want to know what's going on with her if she's if she gets pregnant. But to, here's you know, my, once again, here's three men discussing, that. You know, discussing a woman's uh, you know prerogative about her body is not right. That's a point well taken, uh, Chairman. Here's my my follow up to you on, on that, Chris. These restrictions. Who gets to say? Is it the government that gets to say what the restrictions are and sets penalties? I mean, you know, the, the bottom line is that you don't have a lot of women carrying a child uh, or, or a fetus to eight months and then decide randomly that they want to have an abortion. That's a really extreme case. But even in an extreme case like that, shouldn't the woman and the doctor have the right and prerogative to to make that decision? Why does government have to get involved in that? Absolutely. Listen, by, by, by the Supreme Court doing what they did, they returned this to the states. So what happens by that system is the state legislatures and governors are going to decide these laws. That's that's the system. That's but, the, that but is Chris, the system you have, we have here. You have, you have individuals in your own party that's talking about a national ban on abortion. And, and, and you guys and have individuals sweeping, in your party. And, and, that and, you, is, uh, and Leroy, yeah, you have individuals that is in your party talking and, about and, uh, expanding things, access uh, to late-term abortions. They just don't bode well uh, you know, in our society today. Right. And, Chris, and, well, like I said, you, you guys have people talking in the extremes, too. That's what I'm saying. I think there's a middle ground position here that Republican candidates are talking about. All right, let me move this on because uh, the chairman makes a good point about three guys talking about uh, women's reproductive rights. But uh, let's talk about Donald Trump. Chairman, he's, Him again. he's still the name that comes up all the time. Democrats have used him as the boogeyman for years now. Shouldn't you be talking about your president and the things that he's done and or hasn't done? 
Well, you know, Donald Donald Trump is the gift that keeps on giving for, you know, for our party, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, he, he can't seem to get out of the way of solid Republicans, uh, you know, pu- Republicans who believe in good government, who believe in, uh, you know, the, you know, the rights that are bestowed upon. Uh, upon us by the Constitution, uh, you know, but when you have, uh, you know, that MAGA side of the party that, uh, you know, just gets in the way and Donald Trump is always out at the forefront of that, you know, whether it's, you know, whether it's the, you know, the hearings on uh, the January 6th, uh, you know, um, you know, issue, uh, you know, or, uh, you know, or other things that, uh, you know, this Donald Trump just cannot you know, he cannot move himself out of the discussion. And that hurts Chris's party. And I know Chris won't probably say that, but, uh, you know, but deep down inside, I know he believes that. Chris, no, I, I got to give you a chance to to tell the chairman what you <laughs> believe deep down. Of course, as, as we, we always have a good time doing this, but I would tell you that right now you have Republicans uh, don't have any control here in New Jersey, don't have control in Washington. It's one party rule. Democrats control the presidency. Both, ha- both houses in Congress uh, and here in New Jersey, the governorship and both houses of the legislature. So I-, I would apply the pottery barn rule here, which is if you broke it, you bought it. And I think Democrats own this stuff right now. And, and voters are smart enough to figure that out. They know who's in charge and they're not going to go back and look backwards. They're going to look forwards. Meanwhile, Chris, your side seems to want to have it both ways. Uh, is it hate the player in this case, not the game? I mean, Trump is bad, but his politics and his policies are good. Is that the Republican so, line? I think a lot of people believe that, right? I think some of the positives were good. Look, economically, right now, where would you rather be? Two years ago or today, right? Or three years ago or today? So, I mean, I, I think in terms of the economic policies, yes. I think in terms of President Trump's uh, personality, no, there are a lot of people who were turned off. I, I'll sit here and concede that. But I think the policy is right now, if you ask people to look at their 401k or their retirement savings, I'm sure they'd like to take a time machine back a little bit. We cannot ignore the fact that, uh, you know, this election is about the preservation of our democracy. And Donald Trump, uh, you know, was at the forefront of uh, attempting to destroy our democracy. And, uh, you know, he's still out there. The boogeyman's still out there. Uh, You know, he's lurking, looming, and uh, he just will not, uh, you know, unplug himself, uh, you know, from, uh, you know, you know, a party that, uh, you know, has, uh, you know, had his place in leadership. Uh, you know, but, uh, you know, this man, uh, you know, has, uh, you know, been the destruction of, uh, you know, a large part of the Republican Party. Right, and uh, you know, that MAGA side of it just does not work. Let me move on from that. Uh, I'm running out of time here. Voting uh, has already begun. Has mm-hmm. the new voting schedule changed the way um, either you approach campaigning? I mean, how, does it mean more social media and other methods playing into the schedule? Let me start with you, Chris. Yeah, listen, 100% has changed. And, and, and I'll say, you know, Democrats have been better at the at the vote by mail and the early voting than Republicans. We have to get our act together in that regard. I know there's a lot of effort underway. Chairman Hugan, uh, the Republican state chairman, is working hard to do that. Others in the counties are working hard to do that. But we have to do better because now Election Day is not just the first Tuesday in November. It's six weeks of Election Day. And, and I think both parties, Leroy, would probably agree. It, election Day is every day uh, after ballots go out. So that's changed uh, changed things dramatically as far as I'm concerned. So, you know, Chris, you know, I, I co-sign all that. Uh, you know, we've been, uh, you know, moving, uh, you know, through cycles of, uh, you know, campaign strategy, whether it's vote by mail, uh, you know, we'll pivot to early voting, uh, you know, and then, uh, you know, we'll have boots on the ground on the last day to, uh, you know, pull out all those that, uh, you know, haven't cast their ballot by, you know, by mail or come in early. So, uh, you know, it is, uh, you know, been a great change, uh, you know, in uh, our election strategies to date. All right. Prediction time. Uh, I know you have to say that your side is going to sweep all the races. Here's my question. Uh, Where are we going to be surprised on uh, election night, either in Jersey or nationally and why? Uh, Chairman, real quick from you. So I think, uh, you know, I think here in Jersey, uh, I think CD7 will, uh, you know, will be the uh, surprise of the evening. We'll see Tom Malinowski, uh, you know, the uh, the winner. It probably won't be election night, but, uh, you know, it'll be. Uh, you know, decided when all the votes are counted. Uh, you know, nationally, uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, Georgia is, uh, you know, is a, uh, you know, a, a hot spot. Uh, you know, our neighboring, uh, you know, state, uh, you know, Pennsylvania, Fetterman will take the, uh, you know, that, that night in, as a victory. Uh, all right. You know, and, um, you know, I think those are the two that, uh, you know, stand out in my mind nationally. All right, Chris, let's make it interesting. Um, complete this sentence. Chairman, I bet you a Rutz Hut Ripper that, what? That Republicans in New Jersey have more than three seats in Congress after Election Day. Well, right, what is right. he? What is he betting me, David? 
a, a, a Rutz Hut Ripper. I'm not like, sure what that is, but I'll eat it anyway. Yeah, what is that, Chris? I don't know what that is. <laughs> but hot but is I'm going to win it, whatever it is. <laughs> a ripper is a hot dog that is deep fried. It is a concoction oh. that will probably kill okay. you if you eat more than one, but they're quite tasty. Okay. All right, Chris well, Russell, Leroy Jones, good to see you guys both. Thanks for coming out with us. All right, fantastic. Good seeing you, Chris. Dave, you thanks. Too, Always great.